Thank you to Armand for providing us such great insights on what's available and what's to come for Infrastructure as Code. It was great to see it in action in that demo from Matt Dinopoli. It showed how much our partnership can simplify hybrid cloud infrastructure management, freeing up engineering resources to focus on improving the product rather than just running the product. Now to our final piece, full stack observability. For those of you who are not familiar, full stack observability is about getting the visibility and insights you need to take the right actions when they matter the most. Ultimately, you can't fix what you can't see. To provide an expert lens on FSO, we have Ty ML, the CTO of AppDynamics, to join us. Ty, it's great to have you here. Tell us more about the growing importance of FSO. Thanks, Grace. I really appreciate you having me here. So before we get into why you should care about full stack observability, let's level set a little bit on what full stack observability really means. For me, it's all about visibility, insight, and action. That visibility piece is how are you gathering that telemetry data, metrics, events, logs, and traces to get visibility or observability into a system to understand what is happening in real time live within your system. The, act, the insight piece is all about correlating that information, taking your traditional monitoring and understanding when your SLOs are being violated, and then you can start to see what has changed and what is causing those problems and gives you great insight into what is actually happening within your system. The last piece is being able to action on that insight, whether that's a bad configuration that you want to be able to roll back or a changed user behavior that you need to adjust to for longer term, like you've increased uh, users within Europe. You need to be able to adapt to that. Once you have that visibility, insight, and action, you have what I consider full stack observability. So now that we understand really what it is, let's talk a little bit about why it matters. So the first piece is applications are the foundation of digital business. You're not interacting with businesses like we did five years ago. I'm not walking up to the teller um, within the bank anymore. I'm interacting uh, with the application. And so loyalty and brand loyalty is, is not as important as it, as it was, or at least it doesn't exist as much as it used to. So if I'm going to order from my favorite pizza shop, I've got five different applications that I can use. And so I'm going to choose the application that gives me the best experience and gives me the pizza here the fastest. And so you need to have observability all the way from the end user down to the database and everything in between, whether that's networking, infrastructure, and all your different microservices. You really need to be able to observe the full system to understand what's happening for your end users. The second thing is enterprises have shifted to the cloud. During COVID, we saw an explosion of migrations to the cloud for enterprises. I understand that startups and small businesses have been there for a while, but enterprises are really buying into the cloud and shifting over. And that means they have less control over their system than they used to. And when you have less control, you need better observability. If you're not controlling the data center, if you're not controlling the network, you need better observability into that system to understand what is happening, where you have performance problems, and how it impacts your end users. So it's really important to have that observability as you move to the public cloud. The next thing that I want to talk about is the rise of microservices. That three-tier architecture of applications is long gone, and applications are now microservices. There are a set of services that supply a functionality to an end user. And those microservices are massive. If you think about the really large enterprises, we're talking millions of containers, thousands of pods, hundreds of microservices, and it really becomes almost a living organism. So you have to have observability because that system is constantly changing. The only way for you to understand what is changing is to have observability. That traditional monitoring of monitoring your known problems isn't enough anymore because that system is in constant change. It's more complex than it used to be. You control less of it. So you need that observability piece to really understand what is happening in the system in real time. The last piece that I want to talk about is security. We all know that security incidents have increased dramatically over the last few years. I feel like every time I open up a newspaper, there's another incidence 
um, of security out there and no one wants that. So how do you understand what is happening with all your microservices and your thousands of containers? What are your vulnerabilities in real time and are they being exploited? That is a, a massive problem and the, the traditional solution of scanning everything before you go into production isn't enough anymore. You need that real time observability into what is your security posture in production. That has changed the game and really why we need to be paying attention to full stack observability and why you see monitoring and application performance monitoring and other industries shifting to full stack observability. So recently we surveyed a thousand IT professionals to see if they were seeing the same thing we are, we are seeing and having the same problems. And what we found out was it is absolutely true. All large enterprises are struggling with the same problems. So 93% of the people that we interviewed are monitoring their services, trying to understand uh, what, the, what the impact on end user experience and the business is. But 75% of them are struggling with the noise that is created by all these different microservices, all this telemetry data, and they're really struggling to understand what matters for the business. And then 85% of those are struggling to cut through that noise and get down into the details of what insight can they find within the system and what can they actually action on to help resolve the performance problem. And let's be honest, almost always it's change, whether it's a deployment, a new database query, a configuration change, or some type of change within the user behavior, that is what is going to cause a system to have problems. So you've got to have full stack observability to be able to understand what changed and how you can respond and deal with that change, whether that is rolling back a bad uh, configuration or uh, a new normal of user behavior and uh, new users in Europe. You've got to have that full lens. So let's talk a little bit about how is uh, Cisco helping with full stack observability and where are we? So again, it's all about visibility, insight, and action. And we're doing it through AppDynamics, Cisco Intersight, and Thousand Eyes. So with AppDynamics, we've always been known for our understanding of business impact how your performance problems are impacting your business with context of the end user experience and the application. If you, when you combine Cisco Intersight, you start to get that cloud and infrastructure uh, telemetry data to understand what your infrastructure is doing and how that is tied to the application. Is it an application problem or do you have an infrastructure problem? And then you tie in Thousand Eyes and you can start understanding the network is it a network problem between the AWS region that you're in and your end users in Europe? Uh, is it a networking problem uh, between data centers if you still have data centers? So it gives you that full view of how the network is impacting your end users. And then last but not least, AppDynamics recently announced Cisco Secure Application, which gives you a view real time of the vulnerabilities within your applications and if you're actively being exploited against and gives you a way of blocking that. So this is just the beginning for us uh, as Cisco. And as we go into full stack observability, we need to build an extensible platform to be able to cover the breadth and depth that is full stack observability. And this is really where we need our partners and our developer ecosystem to come along with us on this journey. And now we'll show you a quick demo of AppDynamics Intersights and Thousand Eyes working together for full stack observability. Thank you. With the combination of AppDynamics, Thousand Eyes, and Intersight, application developers, DevOps, and IT operations can take advantage of the notion of full stack observability, or FSO, to optimize and secure their application deployments and the infrastructure they run on. AppDynamics provides the ability for application developers to instrument their services to allow application performance monitoring from a logical perspective. In addition, you can inspect the interaction of those services amongst each other within the same application and their interaction with outside supporting services. Individual service issues such as latency or outages can be quickly identified and ultimately tied back to business outcomes. 
The next layer to full stack observability is provided by Intersight Workflow Optimizer, or IWO. This gives us a physical view into the public cloud and on-premises infrastructure supporting our application, whether it be on bare metal, VMs, or Kubernetes clusters. The final piece to this FSO puzzle is visibility into the performance of the application from the end user perspective. This is provided by Thousand Eyes. Through agents globally deployed in private and public data centers, Thousand Eyes gives application developers and IT operations insight into the paths of application consumption, data on physical location and time of usage, internal and external network concerns, and even regional and global service provider performance allows organizations to make decision on, decisions on application replication and optimization. When layered together, all of these provide a holistic solution into the performance and security of an application end-to-end, -end, opportunities for optimization, and ultimately mitigate the impact of any issue on desired business outcomes. Thanks, Ty. It's interesting to hear how many developers struggle to cut through the noise to identifying underlying performance issues and how we see technology helping address those concerns. And Matt, thanks again for the great demo showing some of our observability technology in action. I hope you all enjoyed this glimpse into the road ahead. It's a vision of our future work together where we bring greater security, more flexibility, and increased observability to our networks and applications. Now, some of you might have been watching those previous presentations and demos and thought, I want to be a part of that future, but how can I get ready? What tools and training is out there to help me work in the space? Don't worry, we have you covered. For those of you just starting, just getting into APIs, applications, and automation, we have an amazing place for you to go. developer.cisco.com slash start now. As the name suggests, it's the first port of call for people who want to start learning about Cisco platforms and taking some steps towards network automation, programmability, and coding. Within Start Now, you'll find curated lists of learning labs broken into bite-sized pieces. You can go from here and then dive in deeper with the sandbox and certifications. Start Now is a great place for anyone that's a beginner in this space. But if you happen to be an expert, we also have some special news to share. And with that, I'd like to bring on Paul Barat, VP of Cisco's Learning and Certification Program. Par, as you know, we launched the DevNet Certification Program in February of 2020. And within the last 18 months, we've seen thousands of people from around the globe get DevNet certified at the associate and professional levels. What news can we announce today about the DevNet certification program? Hey, thank you so much, Grace, for giving us the space to come and talk about our exciting new expert level certification, which we're actually announcing today in terms of its the blueprint being ready. Um, as you know, and you you uh, appropriately referenced, the DevNet certification suite has really only been around for a very short while. And already there are over 15,000 certifications that have been achieved. And that's because of this community, you're the doers, you're the pioneers, and you have molded DevNet into an automation powerhouse. And we've been doing this together, and we're doing it together now. As many of you may recall, I'm one of the founding members of DevNet, which is why I'm so passionate about this program. But, you know, let's first start with why should you care about certifications in general? Why get a certification? Well, according to Gartner, 87% of IT professionals have at least one active certification. Well, nearly 40% of those are already pursuing their second one. And that's because after achieving a certification, IT professionals recognize the benefits immediately. Not only do certifications advance individual careers, but employers recognize their value because they know it will help their businesses stay relevant and their workforce stay relevant on the skills needed for today's digital challenges. And there are many. And what's so amazing is that the DevNet expert ties directly to the trends that are taking place with regard to digital business acceleration and the hyper growth that's taking place. And that is all due to this ever expanding digital fabric and all of the possibilities as well as all of the challenges that come with it. 
The digital fabric has expanded well beyond data centers and, and central cloud solutions and extended well into hybrid cloud, edge computing and full stack observability. I mean, think about it, hybrid work is absolutely here to stay. And that means working from anywhere with the same outcomes and the same experience and the same expectations as working in an office. So automating and securing the network so that people can work from anywhere, from home, from their bedrooms, from their cars is absolutely where it's at. And it's probably why automation is identified as one of the top three skills needed in today's workforce environment. And I know that many of you listening today, you're already DevNet associates or DevNet professionals. Many of you are already part of the DevNet 500. And we know you've been waiting for this DevNet expert certification. Well, it's finally here. And the Cisco certified DevNet expert will validate all of those expert level skills required for the planning, the design, the development, and the maintenance of complex automation driven networks. And that's because the domains covered are software development, deployment and design, infrastructure as code, containers, network programmability and automation, and of course, security. As a certified DevNet expert, you will absolutely bring tremendous value to your organization. You'll not only be able to design and deliver the necessary automation solutions to transform a traditional network into an automated one, but you'll also be leading the transformation into a new culture for your organization. But let's hear from a couple of community members as to where why they're so excited about these new certifications. Hi, my name is Nuno March. I'm a Portuguese double CCIE and CCD. I believe that the greatest value from any certification comes from the journey itself. The DevNet certification will provide solid goals in a structured learning path to build the necessary skill set to overcome the challenges in our rapidly changing networking and application environment. In my opinion, the deep understanding of networking combined with these new skills will allow network engineers to move forward pushing innovation and added value to our customers, partners, and the industry itself. Hi, my name is Fred Gujonsson. I'm from Iceland and I'm a DevNet professional with a specialization in DevOps. Currently, I'm a member of the DevNet 500. I've been in networking for 16 years. Through that time, I've been trying to automate and abstract infrastructure with Perl, C, and Python and other tools. When Cisco announced the DevNet track in 2019, I was very happy that they're finally legitimizing this practice, and I want to be on the forefront of the DevNet experience. The DevNet Expert Certification achievement will be, without any doubt, a huge standout factor for any future expert network engineer. That's why I want to take the Cisco DevNet uh, Expert Certification and help mm -hmm. shape the future with Cisco. Thank you. So as you can see, the much anticipated expert level certification is drumming up a ton of excitement. And if you want to learn more, absolutely go to the DevNet website and download these blueprints. They are now available and we are so excited about them. The one other thing that I'm super excited to talk to you about today is the open enrollment to automation boot camps. Last year at CREATE, we announced our automation boot camps. We've had tremendous attention brought to them and tremendous value achieved by the companies that are uh, embracing them. But the number one request that we got from our community was that you wanted to be able to attend these as an individual. Well, we heard you and that capability is now here. And that means anyone interested in attending a boot camp can sign up for one. And the list to see what's available is on our website. Keep in mind that you can use Cisco Learning Credits to pay for these, and they also count towards your continuing education. So we are super excited. We're super excited about the Cisco Training Boot Camps, and we are over the moon excited about announcing our Cisco DevNet Expert Certifications. Thank you for your time today. Enjoy the rest of CREATE, and we look forward to seeing you on May 2nd. Thank you, Par.
and to all our speakers and to each one of you for being on this journey with us today. So we encourage you to dive on in. Let's learn from our speakers and from each other. We encourage you to ask your questions to us and our speakers in our Q&A panel and find new ways to collaborate and create while you're here. It's an exciting road ahead and there's so much for us to do, so much that we are now able to do from application security, IAC, FSO, and now even the DevNet Expert Certification. I am so excited to be in this community. Your group of pioneers, inventors, artists with code, wizards of the networking world. You are agents of change creating our future. I'm inspired by all of you, the work you've done in the last year, as well as the work we're going to do together. Thank you again for being a member of this community and enjoy DevNet Create.